Welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, just, uh, uh, we are continuing on in AP Calculus. Uh, this is uh, rate, rates of change in the limits chapter. Uh, if you recall in section one of chapter two, we also did limits, uh, I'm sorry, we also did rates of change, but it was toward the end of the section and it was mainly to just kind of emphasize why we're doing limits one of the many reasons of why we're doing limits. And uh, I want to recap some of that stuff here, and if you need more detail on this, uh, remember you can pop back to, I believe it is uh, section uh, video 2.1c, uh, I think, uh, that was about rates of change. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so just a reminder that average rate of change uh, is an overall change in quantity versus change in time over the entire elapsed time. And an example might be something like, again, uh, if we drove 150 miles, let's say in uh, three hours, on average, so the average rate of change would be just how far we went divided by how long it took, and that would be 50 miles per hour. And again, this does not mean we drove it exactly 50 miles per hour for the entire three hours. What this means is, on average, you know, if we had a way to add up all of the microscopic changes in speed, different speeds, and then add them up and divide by how many there were, then the average would be 50 miles per hour. So obviously, that's not practical, but that's it. Um, the basic idea here is slope like in Algebra 1. And again, if I was uh, graphing my distances, you know, how far I, I've gone versus time, uh, the idea here is the average rate of change, the average increase, okay, so maybe our distances look something like this, uh, the average slope, the typical slope for this thing would be that 50, okay? All right, slope of a curve at a point also related, and this is uh, instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. Uh, instantaneous rate of change is like a, uh, the rate of change or the rate or the speed at a specific time. So if I've been driving for three hours, I want to know uh, what's my rate of change, what's my speed or velocity 20 minutes into my drive, one third of an hour into my drive, and that's a very different question. You know, it might be 50. It could have been 70. It might be two miles an hour. Maybe I had to slow down for a traffic jam. Okay. So, but on average, I went 50. Okay. Bunch of synonyms for this. Uh, and what I did was kind of grabbed these uh, out of the book uh, on a couple of different pages. This is actually in chapter three, section one, I believe, and this is in 2.4. And as you recall, uh, I've really been emphasizing finding things this way. Because if you want to use different x values, and you start with one of those x values, you're going to have to do that process multiple, multiple times. And it's just so much easier to let x stay in there, let that variable stay in there. And then just, you know, if you want it for a specific x value, you could go ahead and put that in at the end. Okay? So I just wanted you to see them side by side. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really, really different, or really, really not that different. Okay? Very, very similar. Okay, all right, so let us proceed on. Okay, now this page is kind of scary looking right now, but this is where we left off when we were doing 2.1c. And again, we did average rate of change and we did instantaneous rate of change. And this is a lot to look at all at once and not seeing it happen in front of you. But I just wanted you to, remind, to remember that we actually have done this already. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. Uh, just keep in mind that there are, there are contexts, you know, also known as words, that are going to happen, and you're going to have to kind of figure out uh, how to plug things in and what's going on. Okay? All right. So you can, if you want to see any of that again, feel free to either go back to 2.1c video, or uh, you can pause right where I was just scrolling up and down. That I did that so you could pause. All right. So some synonyms uh, for rates of different rates of change, and. Uh, all of these things basically mean the same thing. I, you know, they, in terms of process, uh, the formula involved is really just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or in other words, change in y over change in x, or it might be change in distance over change in time. Okay, how far did you go? How long did you take to make that distance? Okay. 
versus all of these things mean the same thing. Okay, and again, the formula for this, okay, and you can pick any of these uh, symbols to represent them or any of these words. Uh, again, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I missed the limit, so I'm going to make some more room. Sorry. Uh, limit as h approaches 0 of all of that. Okay, And you saw that on the page before, so that should not be a shock. Okay, So this is the process you use to get this. Okay, So all of these are cinnamon, synonyms. Instantaneous rate of change, slope of tangent line, slope at a point, you can read. Okay? These are all the same thing. And they're all this. These are all the same thing. And they're all this. Okay? Worth noting that I typically abbreviate rate of change. Uh, since of is a little word, not that important, I use a lowercase. And so that's rate of change. So you'll see me write stuff like average rate of change or, or instantaneous rate of change. Okay? So don't freak out if that's what happens. Okay? Moving. All right, I'm going to do a couple of examples. Uh, and, and these are going to be very, very similar to the examples uh, from the book. And uh, just so you're aware of it, and I don't know why that won't go away, that little highlighting. It's bugging me. Sorry. There we go. Okay, um, so these are these problems are going to be, uh, first I'm going to do something similar to number one. Okay, so I'm going to call it uh, 1.5, and these are problems from page 92. And this is again from the Calculus Graphical Numerical Algebraic Book by Finney Demana Waits Kennedy, uh, put out by Pearson Prentice Hall. Uh, it is our standard AP Calc book, so thank you to them for uh, giving us some stuff to start with. Um, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to give you a function. Let's uh, call it uh, 2x squared plus x, and I want the average rate of change over this interval. Now, quick note here that that is an interval. Okay, so that means that these are what kind of values. Notice that this is brackets. I don't have to uh, use brackets here. Uh, I could use parentheses, but, and, and it's still going to be the same average rate of change. But understand that since I'm talking about an interval, I'm talking about location, this is an x1 and this is an x2. This is not an ordered pair. This is not a single point. This is really giving me information about two points. So one of those points is going to be negative one something, and one of them is going to be two something. Well, so I just need y values because this is average rate of change. Basically, I'm finding slope. I'm finding m1, or I'm sorry, m. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. All right, so I need all of those values to put in. So I already know the bottom, so I can say 2 minus negative 1. That's great, but I need some y values to go with. Okay, So I'm just going to take these values and put them in the equation. So for this one, 2 times negative 1 squared plus negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So this is 1. Okay, So that's one of those y values. Okay. Another y value, I'm going to put in 2 still into that equation. So this is 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So that's my other y value. Okay, so remember you have to maintain consistency in the order of subtraction. So if I start with 2 on the bottom, I'm going to start with 10 on the top. Okay, so this is 9 over 3. The average rate of change is 3. Now, if I had units, then I would be using those units. I don't have any units for this particular problem. But if this was in, uh, let's say, uh, uh, feet and x was in seconds, if that were true, then this would be feet per second. Okay, that's it. So the rate of change on average from negative 1 to 2 is 3 feet per second. Okay, a little quick graphical connection here. Graph, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, vertex, uh, I'm sorry, I have a 0 at 0, and I have a 0 at, looks like negative 2. So my parabola ought to look 
something like this. Uh, the vertex should be in, in the middle, in between these, in between those two uh, zeros, because it's got to be symmetric. And if I look at negative one, one, negative one, one, how can that be? That is right, though, negative one, one, but that's not right on this graph. Hang on. Oh, it's magic. All right. We're back. Sorry, I did fix the graph. Uh, I caught what the issue was. I was kind of trying to do the little factor thing in my head, and that other zero uh, should have been negative one half instead of two, negative two. So sorry about that. All right, so we're back. I just again, uh, you don't have to do this for part of this problem. I just want you to see what's going on. Okay, so the point negative one one is here, and the point two ten is obviously going to be way up here somewhere. If I connect those, then what I just found was the equation, I'm sorry, the slope of that secant line. That's, that's what I just found was the slope of that secant line, okay? All right, so I, I don't want to say really any more about this one right now, but again, average rate of change is the slope of the secant line. Remember, if you're given that interval, okay, so like in, in this case, uh, the interval was this thing, okay? And then you had this equation to work with. That's what you started with. Just remember that interval is two x values, so you're going to make two ordered pairs, find the slope. That's it, okay? Um, I want to make a distinction then. Uh, let's, let's go to another page, okay? So I want to go back to that same f of x equals 2x squared plus x. And instead of finding the average rate of change at uh, between on that interval, what we're going to do is find it at a specific x value. Okay? So again, the formula for this is we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0. And this is going to be for f prime. That's how you say that. That's one of the symbols for what we're working with. Okay? And, sorry, I, I really need just to do the formula. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so that is, that's what we're going to work with. Okay. All right, now, here, here's the thing where you, you, you really have to be careful with this, especially uh, when you have multiple spots in the equation for x. Okay, hopefully this will all fit. Here we go. So f of x is 2 times something squared plus something. That is f of x. Well, what I'm doing is I'm putting in, everywhere there's that x, I'm going to put in x plus h. So that is f of x plus h. And I will tell you, and I, and I know, you, you know, I, I think I've had all of you uh, for previous classes, that it's easier if you do those grouping symbols everywhere there's an x first and then go back through and substitute the x plus h. I also know from experience most of you are not going to do that. But it will save you some frustration. Okay? All right, so f of x plus h, that's this thing right here. You don't need to box it. I just want you to see it. Okay? In fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Thank you. I'm going to highlight. How about that? I'm just feeling all special right now. All right, so that works. Okay, so here's f of x plus h. Here's f of x plus h. Okay, now I still need to do minus f of x. Well, f of x is 2x squared plus x. You know, me, you know, you see where I'm going now? Watch, watch me. I'm going to highlight with a different color. All right, here, for this is for all you fans of purple. A little hard to see through the purple, and I'm sorry, but it, it makes the point. Okay, so here's f of x, and then the other part was f of x plus h, and here's my h on the bottom. Okay, now for those of you who are frustrated because you can't see, I'm going to undo that so that we can go back and then I'll put my h back. Okay, all right, there you go. At, at this point, it's just a matter of simplifying and then substituting. So I'm going to kind of buzz along here. Okay, and Again, this is going to be tricky. So 2, and I'm f remember that I'm really doing x plus h times x plus h for that x plus h squared. So I'm doing x squared, 2xh, h squared. Okay, 
plus the other x plus h. Okay, so this is, again, all of that yellowish stuff. I guess I'll highlight again just to do this one more time. Okay, and then it's going to get to be blurry. Well, it's going to all run together in a second. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute this uh, since it's here. Okay, if you find later that things aren't subtracting out, or as we like to say, canceling out, uh, check your sign stuff. I mean, it's so easy to make a little sign error here. Okay, so I um, have to distribute again. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so doing some subtracting now. So 2x squared minus 2x squared. Um, x minus x. Okay, so those are gone. Everything else has an h, and there are no other like terms. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this, and I know some of you won't rewrite this now, and you're just going to go ahead and divide out the h, and I'm okay with that, provided you're not going to make mistakes with it. Okay, and at this point, Everything has an H, so as I like to say, we're going to get the H out of here. Okay, and I need to scroll a little bit because I ran out of page. Okay, remember you can pause at any point. Okay, and again, I'm going to rewrite this, and again, I know not everybody will, and that's okay, provided you're not losing details. Like this one, for instance, what's H divided by H? Mm -hmm. So easy to miss that. So easy to miss that. Can I say it again? So easy to miss that. Now we're at a spot where we can evaluate this limit by substituting. We couldn't do that before because it would have made it undefined or indeterminate at some point in here. Okay, so we're finally there. So again, this was y prime, also known as f prime, f of x prime or f prime of x, 4x plus 1. Okay, now the question though, Let's go back to actually see what the question was. Find the rate of change. Now, we're, what we're finding is the actual instantaneous rate of change, and that was implied by the fact that we had a single x value. Okay. Now, let me pop down 4x plus 1. Okay. So, f prime of x, again, was 4x plus 1. And if we want to know this at x equals 2, well, f prime of 2 is... I guess that's 9. Now, if you recall at the end of the silliness on the last example I did, I said, okay, what if this was feet and what if the x was in seconds? Well, then if that's true, this is still feet per second. Okay, so whatever units, you know, so remember what this is. It, it's kind of like change in y over change in x. It's just for an infinitely skinny change in x. So whatever the y variable was, uh, whatever the u y units were, excuse me, over whatever the x units were, that, that's what you have to go with for units f when you're finding instantaneous rate of change. Okay? All right. I want to um, just, uh, where are we time-wise? 18 minutes. Let, let's just do one more thing with this. Uh, 2x squared plus x. Okay, so this is f prime of x. Oh, I'm sorry, f of x, yeah, I need a smaller eraser, f of x was 2x squared plus x, okay? Uh, I just want to remind you of the rule that I haven't taught you yet and we're still not using yet, but uh, I, I, it's just a way to check it and I, I, after this huge long process going through this, I want you to be able to check it, okay? So again, the idea is that If you are doing uh, instantaneous rate of change, the idea is you can multiply the exponent times the coefficient and uh, then subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, so for this, again, you can't use this on the test. You can check it. That's cool. In Chapter 3, we will do this, and, and you'll be all good, but right now, no. So 2 times 2 is 4 times x to the, well, 2 minus 1 is 1. 
normally we won't write that x to the 1, but you know what's going on. There's an implied coefficient of 1 here, an implied exponent of 1 here. 1 times 1 is you, oh, you're amazing, 1 times x to the 0 power, because this is 1 minus 1, so x to the 0. Again, we don't normally write that. So this is 4x plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that does match what we got over here. Okay. So again, it's not an option uh, for actually doing showing work on a test or a quiz, but but you you can use that, and that's just one tiny rule out of the many rules we will learn in chapter three. But I just want you to you know be able to check yourself. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me just kind of mention a couple of things here, and because I need to wrap up. When you look at a uh, problem like, uh, like 24 in the book, it has to do with a rocket launch. And they tell you that, at, uh, that the height t seconds after liftoff is 3t squared. And then they want to know how fast is it climbing at 10 seconds. Well, how fast is it climbing Sounds like how fast, not fact. Uh, sounds like either velocity or speed, which are closely related. I mean, velocity is speed with a, in a, a direction. It's a vector quantity. Speed is just how fast is it going regardless of direction. You just make it positive. Okay, so if I'm talking about a single time, that ought to be instantaneous rate of change which is the big limit as h approaches 0, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So you're, you're using context. Okay? You, ha you have a context. Okay, let me, let me just kind of make a distinction. 24.5, let's say it's still rocket launch. Uh, let's say uh, we want the average rate of change, the average velocity over the first 10 seconds. Well, the first 10 seconds would imply from time equals 0 to time equals 10, this is now meaning we're going to have to get an ordered pair and an ordered pair. Okay? That is not what 24 is asking, but I'm just, I want you to see the distinction. The wording would be different. On average, how fast was it going over the first 10 seconds is a very different question from how fast is it going at 10 seconds. And I know this sounds awfully, uh, an awful lot like the third vid video from section 2.1 because it's really the same content. It's just, okay, you've had some practice with limits now. Let's take a spin. Okay, let's do some stuff with it. And, uh, and I guess that's it. Okay, well, you know that you can rewind to any part of this. You know you can go back to section 2.1c uh, and look at uh, more video uh, about the same exact topic. And, uh, and that, that's it for for 2.4, and that really wraps up chapter 2. So we'll see you in class.